scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I'm not against the concept of covenant, but I, I feel comfortable knowing that I'm in partnership with the Spirit because it is possible to be in partnership with someone who is able to cover for your limitations and that introduces the mercy of god in the equation but the fact that the mercy of god is available does not mean that i will not play my role hallelujah praise the lord and week after week by the grace of god is that rain please come in ushers coordinate them let's be very fast come in sit everywhere everywhere please come in come in come in with your chairs as much as possible we apologize it's a rainy season come in just bring them in please let the rain not we already appreciate your commitment bring them in their spaces add you can add more seats in front please hallelujah we really apologize. We're a very responsible ministry. And my heart goes out to all those who do not have seats or those who are outside. We really apologize. Praise God. You can add more chairs in front. Bring them in front. Don't feel embarrassed. Relax. Make yourself very comfortable. One of the reasons why men of God do not get blessed and one of the reasons why God does not honor many ministries with people is because they do not know that ministry is all about people. Hallelujah. When you treat people like animals, they will not come to your church or to your meeting. Hallelujah. Forget the fact that we teach and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is this. If you like, don't come and get blessed. By the time you see empty pews again and again, you must change your confession. We treat people with honor and dignity because the Bible says, now we do not yet appear we shall, what we shall be like. We realize that we are treating men and women of royalty, men of dignity. Only God can tell how far. Because the word of God that we teach and preach is the incorruptible word of God that is able to make any man become great. Once again, we apologize. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight I'm teaching on one of those keys again. Many of us have been receiving these keys again and again. Please just indicate by way of lifting your hands if you know that you are gaining understanding into the operation of spiritual things. Let me see your hands. That you can, like a doctor, look at someone's life right now. Hallelujah. Come, sir. Can I use you? Come. If this brother comes to us right now and he says, I'm being oppressed, by demons and powers of darkness i expect anyone who has been faithfully listening to these teachings and even the many thousands and millions online who are following us listen i expect 
that you should be able to profess solution to this brother hallelujah and that solution is not to take him to joshua selman if you if the solution is to take him to joshua selman then you are not learning enough because the goal is not for one man to stand and become alpha and omega the goal is that by the investments of the word of god in you you are able to have the ability the revelation the faith and the anointing to legislate on behalf of heaven hallelujah so i expect just anybody at all to be able to walk up to this brother and say brother if you are in christ you are seated with christ in heavenly places and although this is true don't feel embarrassed it doesn't mean that because you are going through what you are going through the word of god is a lie i am here as an ambassador to enforce that verdict in your life hallelujah and then you expect the backing of heaven if this brother comes right now and says nothing is working in my life there's no job there's no finance there's no marriage there's no open door i'm a failure all round. i expect any of us to be able to sit with this brother in three days and by the revelation the strategic revelation of the word of god you should be able to bless him listen the knowledge of the word is a gift you can give people hallelujah i can count money my brother even if it is one million naira if i give you it will finish either by carelessness or fruitful use it will still finish are you getting my point now but if i deposit in you notice my choice of words the strategic word of god not just the word of god by his stripes no not by his stripes um tithe give be blessed and so on and so forth that is not strategic you don't teach people that way that's information hallelujah teaching means to bring you into the understanding of the operation of kingdom principles that's what it means to understand when you understand the thing you can explain it if it is still vague you only know it you don't understand it the proof that you understand a truth in the kingdom is that you can teach it confidently hallelujah bless you sir thank you tonight i'm sharing very briefly and then we'll pray on a message i titled koinonia ancient secrets to power and relevance koinonia and then colon ancient secrets to power and relevance please listen to this message tonight i truly believe it's very powerful and it will change our lives his grace your grace i'm nothing without you it's grace your grace shines on me it's your grace your grace lord i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me listen you know why i took this song you know how confident i am about life you cannot imagine it's not arrogance ah look see when you see me teach these truths the bible says i found your word and i did eat them and they became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. If I buy shares for you, you may be happy. And you may feel secured. Right? If I connect you to a rich man, you may be happy and feel secured. If I connect you to an anointed man, you may feel happy and secured. But brothers and sisters, when you are connected to the revelation of the truths of the kingdom, is the ultimate secret for confidence in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, like, it's like beer that intoxicates. Until it has become true in your life, you may not understand. 
this is why paul even had to correct himself he said we make our boasting but then he said in the lord so that you will not be misunderstood the word of god gives you such a level of confidence all of a sudden when you understand the principles of the kingdom you will now begin to connect the equations of life you will now find out that as have hazard as life looks there is a formula that governs his operation are you getting what i'm saying you will just know that nothing just happens there is a formula listen when you find it you have found it it may it may cost you to find it but brothers and sisters when you find it it's an asset you don't need to refrigerate it i keep saying it you don't need to keep it with another untrusted person it's yours and it's yours for life hallelujah receive the word receive the word receive the word it's your way out of mediocrity in life it's your way out of irrelevance i don't know what you may be going through right now and i don't care how bad things are in your life i'm telling you the truth brothers and sisters if you receive the word of the kingdom the strategic understanding of the operation of the kingdom you are a champion and no power in existence can stop it it's not about prophecy it's not just about laying on of hands it's about coming to a point where you are built by knowledge so when you look at life the thing that makes others panic it no longer makes you panic because you understand the hidden operation of these realities many people just wait for the physical consequences of whatever happens in the spirit and then they try to manage it when it appears physically that's a risky way of living hallelujah the bible says they that know their god daniel eleven thirty two, the b part he said they shall be strong and in this life they will do exploits there are some of us here who are ministers of the gospel and we are trusting god to stamp his hand upon our lives i'm telling you this is the way it works there are some of us who are great leaders corporate leaders great people in different areas of our lives there are some of us who have come on behalf of ourselves and the numerous confused people that we have in our lineage and we know that we are the saviors if we miss it there might not be a door of opportunity but i have good news for you they said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth the word of god has equal value to any man there's no tribalism about the word of god i hate tribalism you would have noticed that i hate tribalism of any sort because the word of god places us in the same position your only limitation is your degree of persistence and your degree of passion to spiritual things what the word of God will do to a Hausa man, it will do to a Yoruba man. What the word of God will do to an Igbo person, it will do to a South South person. What the word of God will do to an illiterate, it will do to a professor. The word of God has equal value. If it is received, believed, and acted upon. This for me is the ultimate representation of God's justice that God is a just man truly because if the word of God had a way of becoming an advantage unto others by default then would have said God God is playing injustice somewhere that means the word of God gives me the same opportunity the same opportunity the same opportunity and through the months the last two three months we've been talking about several things i am very proud of the fact that a majority of the people in this meeting are young people i'm very proud of it years ago let me tell you something years ago when god started with us and we started this great thing that we see today a lot of people felt it's just young people but they have forgotten that the man celebrating 50 years today was once a young man who was misled with wrong information and he 
he confused himself to old age and so for me a man of god said the lord told him something he said give me the youth and i will give you a new nation some of our parents are too old to effect change they will only leverage on our own transformation are you getting what i'm saying Some of you are in children ministry and when you are talking to the children you just look at them little children hello wake up and see those who were i still remember very vividly when i was very very small if you have forgotten you are really old hallelujah i remember i remember a few commitments that i made in my life to seek god i have no regret because I always say this young people have time but they lack knowledge they are inexperienced they are naive old people don't have time but they have learned the lesson through pain but there's no time to correct it so we have the advantage of knowledge and time and I will get all the knowledge and do great things for the kingdom hallelujah isn't it amazing that some of the truths we are hearing, a number of people here are married, but most of us, many of us here are not married. Is it not a great blessing to know that your children will not eye you one day and say, goodness, what sort of father are you? Or what sort of mother are you? Are you not happy that your generation will look at you and say, we were blessed to have you? Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. I treasure this ministry. I treasure that which God is doing. It is an opportunity to transform lives. I said this thing about five, six years ago that we are all going to be great and the great parties will all know one another. Yes, we'll remember one another. Do not underestimate what the Holy Ghost is doing in the lives of people. This is a renaissance. It's a revolution. It's like the foxes that Samson set on fire and just sent them. There are some of you sitting down here. Even you, you do not know how mighty. Who knows, maybe there are wives of presidents in this place. What is wrong with that? I love that lady. She lifted her hands and said, hallelujah. In other words, I'm not sitting in the presence of God for nothing. There are multi- billionaire conglomerate owners who are spirit filled see that an apostolic not just wild people advancing hell they understand strategic kingdom advancement there are men and women of god who carry anointing indeed there will be very little competition when we start manifesting because great will be the grace upon us there will not be need for envying people. We will celebrate one another because we have become colleagues in victory. So I can be invited for a meeting. I may, I may not be able to go. I'll say, sir, please go for me. And I know that Christ will be glorified. It's not about one great MOG. That's why we are pressing. The earth will see wonders. Ah every man before he was used of god he believed he was nothing but not when god stretches his hands upon you he will make a wonder lord we thank you for what you are doing i treasure and i appreciate what god is doing in my life and i'm encouraging you do not trivialize what god is doing in your life not everybody is as yielded as you are i hope you know that this is friday night there are many disco halls that are open. What's the time? It's the right time when everything is open. And trust me, there are some people sowing to the flesh, making generous investments unto death. But you are here building your spirit. There is the justice system of God. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever, not a preacher, a man sows. Brothers, you are standing now, but you are already sowing for your children. School fees will be paid. You are not even aware when it was paid. That's how blessed it can be. 
because you will bless people your child will become a millionaire at age five not because you did anything it's a privilege they will make all your children head boy head girl it's not head boy anything it's just to bring the favor of god to the school i can imagine how my children will be you know i think about this thing let me tell you something very humorous a lady during my birthday she's here she bought me baby shoes as birthday gift and i said goodness that's that's for another day that's for another day that's for another day <laughs> do you believe in what god is doing in your life yeah that you will end certain cycles a day will come your name will become a password to favor for people that when when there are barriers and there's nothing to do they don't need to start shouting jesus foolish they say i know this gentleman see you know him are you sure please ah. may it happen oh god may it happen may it happen may it happen yes it will happen so let people laugh at you no problem let them criticize you no problem pay the price now sisters i can guarantee you you are going to marry very good men it's a guarantee you like don't say amen i can guarantee you don't you think forget the fact that these brothers are wearing sandals and their jeans are faded what is in them he said though our outward man perish yet the inward man is being renewed you hold on they may not have forget about all these men that come with jeeps you have already seen their future you don't know the future of these ones those of you who are gullible following every man calm down you will see the rising when you see the son of men in power and glory you will remember brothers take your gary honorably give jesus praise because you're already counting days and same for the brothers i guarantee that you will marry virtuous ladies yes see the bible says he that finds a wife a, a wife is not the name of a lady a wife is 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 a is a is is is, is a personal it's not a personality it's a what do i call it it's an office you must be a wife before you become found it's a he that finds a wife not he who's finding makes her a wife that, that's for another day. <laughs> ah, some of you are happy. You wish I would just continue. You like this love and relationship thing. We are taking over the mountains. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Say after me, I'm great. Please say it with revelation. I am great. This is not just it's not just those childish confession i am great i'm really great say i'm influential yeah. thank you jesus koinonia ancient secrets to power and relevance blessed be the name of the lord write this word down the teaching has begun please make sure you have something right you just shouted i'm great i'm great is right or your phones if you don't have don't feel bad don't be under pressure but next time please get a notebook not just a jotter that you bring out from the back of your pocket have a very good hardcover note see this this means a lot of things about you it means i am responsible i mean business about my life i'm not a joker and i'm going somewhere when you get a good hardcover notebook when you slip pieces of paper and with broken virus that are all stained it tells me the quality of your appreciation for your future write this word down uncommon <sighs> help us holy spirit I'm sharing something very spiritual and i trust that the power of god will back up the things that we're teaching tonight write that word down uncommon because this is what you are becoming the word uncommon means to be needed it means to be needed it means to be in high demand to be in high demand it means to be significant 
Are you writing, please? It means, I like this one, not easily replaceable. To be uncommon means that you are not easily replaceable. It means worthy of honor. To be uncommon means that you are worthy of honor. It means you are an endangered species. It means you are scarce. You are highly prized. I'm just talking. Hallelujah. The revelation of the word of God is making us uncommon. Uncommon means you do not find it anywhere. Uncommon means you don't pick it on the ground. Gold is a treasured metal because you have to dig the earth to find it. No one treasures sand so much because you can bend down and just pick it up. So God is making us uncommon. Pray in one minute before I start teaching. Say, Lord, you are making me uncommon. I receive of that ministry. I receive of that ministry. Pray. You're making me uncommon. I'm becoming uncommon. I'm a joy to my family, to all those around me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word koinonia, please write it down. The word koinonia means there are actually seven meanings. It's a Greek word from the text that we just took. The word koinonia. It has seven meanings, but I'll just focus on three of them. Number one, it means communion. The coming together of two people. It means intimacy. A state of closeness that brings about oneness. Intimacy. And number three, it means partnership or joint participation partnership or joint participation i have discovered in my life and i've studied from scripture that this word koinonia enshrined in this word is the revelation that holds the key to true power true anointing many of us when you see a man that is mightily being used by god we say this man is anointed or this is a powerful man of God or this man is full of grace you know and so on and so forth to mean that there is a rich deposit of the ability of the Holy Spirit in that man's life and tonight I want to show you the secret because there is a secret I call it an ancient secret an ancient secret that is responsible for power genuine authentic power the ancient secret that is responsible for timeless relevance relevance that cuts across dispensations relevant that cuts across age and geographic barriers koinonia that word hmm. every man in scripture we, we see when, when you read from Genesis down to Revelation, you see that God used all sorts of people. He used Tamaras, he used thieves, doubting people, temperous people, educated people, illiterate people. So there were all kinds of people with their personality differences and temperaments. But one thing happened to them all. They had encounters. And they came into this mystery called koinonia. And that was the secret of the rich deposit of the spirit in their lives and it made them relevant through the dispensation of their generations and some of them were even referred to in dispensations that were not their own for instance abraham we make reference to him transgenerational relevance koinonia everybody say koinonia there is a state of intimacy and fellowship 
that you have with the Holy Spirit that will translate into the anointing of the Spirit working in your life. And tonight I'm going to guide us very briefly into it and then we'll pray. There is something that you can know. You know, through the past months we've been exploring the concept of relevance, success, impact and all of that because it is very important. It's not only enough for us to explore prayer, spiritual things, the gifts of the Spirit, you know, and so on and so forth. It, many of us will be consoled. Our Christian experience will comfort us when we begin to learn the principles that make us relevant. Hallelujah. Koinonia. That secret that the ancient knew. Right now we teach all kinds of formulas and I love principles. We teach methods of getting the anointing. I've, I've read a lot of books, especially in recent times. There are all kinds of books and all kinds of things that attempt to teach people on the anointing and i'm telling you unfortunately many of these people that write these books have not demonstrated the reality of the anointing in their lives and so they have written theological dissertations about the anointing and the workings of the anointing and the way it translates into making a man relevant and many people have applied these principles right now we 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 think the anointing is something or the power of the holy spirit is just a formula do a do b and then automatically it will happen no no you are dealing with somebody you are dealing with a personality you are not dealing with an animal you're not dealing with an object you're not dealing with a machine you are dealing with a real person who has emotions a real person who has a who can you can have fellowship with and if you do not understand koinonia then you may never taste kingdom relevance in your lifetime hallelujah fellowship the fellowship of the spirit here paul begins to speak in in second corinthians he said the grace of our lord jesus christ that grace is also the love of god and he says the fellowship of the spirit the fellowship the constant coming together the joint participation between you and the spirit let it remain with you i hope you know that the corinthian church were a powerful church it was it was in first corinthians 12 down to 14 that paul began to talk to the corinthian church because they were working mightily in the gifts of the spirit they were moving in spiritual things paul even had to talk to them and in first corinthians 14 verse 40 he said let all things be done decently and in order he had to come in and bring order because the demonstration of the spirit upon their life was so rich it was creating chaos and the secret he encourages them to keep doing what they had been doing that brought the glory and the power of god and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship do not ignore fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he was telling them. Make sure that you do not get too busy in life and in ministry. Make sure you do not become so much of a, a, a minister, a preacher, a celebrity that you forget the fellowship of the Spirit because your relevance is tied to it. This is what Paul was trying to let the Corinthian church know. That the fellowship of the Spirit be. Let it remain. Let it not become an occasional thing. Because the church was getting famous. They were doing great things. They were getting busy. Just like many of us are becoming busy. Let me tell you something with people. When they start out with God. Because there are no invitations. Permit my bias. I'm talking about ministers. But it applies to every area of our lives. As a minister when you are starting out. No one knows you. There's no ministry, there's no invitation, no grace speaking. So it is easy to stay in the place of fellowship. And I'll share a few components of that. You know, you stay, you experience that koinonia. You can dedicate a whole day, a whole week. But then something happens. When you start becoming busy, there are all kinds of ministrations here and there. You have invitations and you have to even select which one to go and which one not to go at that point the the grace and the impetus to continue koinonia is affected 
because right now there is nothing to lose even if you stay for one month and you don't read anything there are tapes that have recorded the workings of god in your life and those tapes will open doors of ministration when you stand there will always be something to share and god cannot deny himself so you will still see the grace of god here and there in your meeting and then many people become stunted and many people even lose relevance I preached the message and you can get the teaching the secret of sustained glory i think it's a preparatory message to what i'm sharing tonight and if you don't have it you can get it from the media it's free the secret of sustained glory the secret of transgenerational relevance i don't want to be a man of god who will be relevant for four or five months and then one day they'll say ah i remember we used to know this guy oh he loved god i don't know what happened but it has happened there are so many people like that. In this country, there are men who were relevant in certain seasons. They carried the banner of spiritual things. They pioneered certain great things. But right now, their voices are silent. I want to tell you something. When you lose the fellowship of the spirit, you have lost the place of spiritual power and you have lost the place of relevance. When you lose koinonia, when this word becomes foreign in your life and through your your words you cannot mention that word frequently again i'm assuring you you have lost spiritual power everybody say koinonia say fellowship that fellowship of the spirit the psalmist understood this and he said Cast me not away from your presence. He said, take not your spirit from me. It was the Holy Ghost that took me. It was Koinonia that took me from a shepherd boy to become a king over the nation of Israel. And he said, oh Lord, cast me not. It's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this participation is because of my joint partnership that I've written so many songs. I've written so many hymns that I am considered to be a great king because of one that works together with me. And he says, oh Lord, cast me not away. Let nothing happen in my life and in executing my work that makes you cast me from your presence because at that point, I will begin to lose relevance. Hallelujah. This happened to his son called Solomon. Solomon, theologically speaking, wrote the book of Ecclesiastes in his fallen state. Hallelujah. That's why he wrote all sorts of things. Vanity upon vanity, he was angry. All his vanity. He was communicating frustration because he had done all sorts of things. The man who saw the manifest presence of God twice, it was Solomon who prayed at the dedication of the temple. He said, now arise, O God, and come to your resting place. It was Solomon. Now Solomon had lost the place of koinonia, and he began to lose relevance. And he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, advising people and communicating his frustration. He said, I gave myself to everything. Everything my eyes saw that I wanted, I got. No restraint. Because you see, the place of intimacy is the place of pruning. It's where God creates boundaries in your life. It's where God builds you. And as you're moving, prosperity, influence gives you options. It enlarges your coast. And it takes you returning to the spirit so that he will set boundaries. Otherwise, you will break boundaries until you lose relevance. Hallelujah. It is the absence of koinonia, listen to me, that can make a man of God begin to walk and live very well and do great things. And when he finds out that God has blessed him with a large congregation made up of all kinds of pretty ladies, lack of koinonia, a visitation and a sustaining, um, remaining in the secret place that can make him compromise on the secrets and the principles that sustain the anointing until there are all kinds of of trouble in his life all sorts of things here and there disturbing a man of god's wife sleeping with somebody who came for counseling i'm not castigating people the mercy of god is still there but i'm just telling us it can be preventive are you getting my point now you can you can prevent it it can be prevented sorry 
you don't have to wait until you pass through it and then try to manage it there's a great man of god i honor the man so much he has a television ministry he was a great evangelist mighty evangelist then if there was a little scandal not now that a man of god can even come on stage and say i'm gay and then nothing happens congregation doesn't change then no matter how little the scandal was you've lost your ministry a great man of god by the name jimmy swaggart this man did mighty things he was in the class of benny Hinn and reinhard bonke and all these men of god mighty man but just a little scandal just dropped him down and he's risen back today he's doing great things but he may never be like before again hallelujah a man of god who starts in the secret and now becomes and all that he's obsessed about is cars he he can sit down browsing all through the night all sorts of cars because it's just to make the order and in six weeks he's, he's in his garage lost without restraint everybody say koinonia the secret of true spiritual power i'm teaching us this because it is important that we become relevant what are the components of true fellowship with the holy spirit what must happen in your life for us to really say you're fellowshiping with the holy spirit what does it entail koinonia is not just a vague thing it's, it's something that is is you can describe the activities that happen in that secret place number one or before we even talk about them let me just tell you something if you want to enjoy intimacy with the holy spirit the first thing is that you must recognize and respect his ministry in your life You must respect his relevance in your life. This is very important. Very, very important. I can never be close to you if you do not communicate to me that I am needed in your life. Is that true? How many of you have found yourself restraining yourself from certain people and friends because they act every time you are around as though you are a, you are a what? You are a pest. Is that true? Have you seen people like that? Even when there is fire falling on their head, you say, let it fall. The last time I went there, they treated me like a dog. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is God. Make sure you write it. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not the first man. The Holy Spirit is God in all the fullness. So you must be able to respect and be prepared to receive his ministry. I learned that from Benny Hinn. Till today, when Benin stands upon his crusade stage with hundreds and of thousands of people and millions of people, he gives acknowledgement. You know what it means to acknowledge a man? Go for occasions and you find out that if there are dignitaries seated around, they don't start the occasion proper until you acknowledge them. In our midst here is so, so, so and so and then they say a little bit about the man. He was able to do this and while they are doing that the man is excited he's happy and there are ushers already standing close to him say ladies and gentlemen please make welcome this and that and his lovely wife and two of them try to pretend i don't want to go and they say please sir we must we love you too much this seat was made for you and you are acknowledging them and the amount the man did not plan to give he will give it because he was acknowledged the bible says in all your ways acknowledge it didn't say talk to him many of us talk to god but we don't acknowledge him hallelujah do you respect the holy spirit or do you just believe in him i respect his ministry there is an invisible person brothers and sisters that stands close to me take that person away from me two weeks two weeks joshua selman is dead people will keep asking what happened maybe he has gone to babala or maybe the charm was not renewed everything has backfired the presence of the spirit i'm not embarrassed listen and let me use this to teach you the secret of friendship for many of you everybody you come close to runs away from you let me tell you what is wrong now it's not necessarily demons it's because your life creates a picture 
that trivializes the importance of people in your life. The Bible says, he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. If I come to your room and you are frowning because you want to put food and I'm full, it's not even that I want to eat, but the way you are frowning, you are creating a body language that tells me you serve now for you. You know, you think I'll come there again? But when I come and you celebrate me, you show genuinely from your heart that if I were to come hundred times, you will still receive me. A time will come when I will make my habitation in your house there. That's what happened to the prophet. Remember? The prophet and the Shunammite woman? Every time he passed, when the woman saw him, she, she made table. She studied the things that he liked. She put a table for him because she noticed he was always receiving from God and writing. And the prophet was so amazed. A time came when she even created a room for him. And she was blessed. Do you make room for the spirit? You get up in the morning. You get up in a whole week. And you don't care about him. You don't talk to him. And then sometimes we come for koinonia. And people just tell a lot of lies. You are the love of my life. Ha, love of your life of your life not even of your day of your life I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I was teaching in a ministry and I said hold on do you know what silver and gold is silver and gold ha can change your life and your family I wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are, you are my air. As a lady, when you are singing, your husband will just be looking at you. You are my everything. Okay. I now see the reason why you don't cook for me again. You are not faithful. Can you give the Holy Spirit your all? Can you let him know that I have no ministry without you? This is what I tell him in the secret place. I say, Lord, people love me today because you love me. If I reject you, that's the same thing that will happen. My life is a reflection of the honor I give to him. Every time I honor him, I find out that people honor me. Every time I find out that my honor for him is dwindling, I see it happen in my life and I run for a retreat quickly. Hallelujah. When you dishonor the Holy Spirit, your life will reflect that dishonor. Because the glory that keeps you honorable fades away. Hallelujah. See, I respect the Spirit of God. Yes, I do. I do. I respect Him. I honor Him. I don't just believe in Him. I've had the opportunity to preach in crusades and meetings and conferences and so many meetings I'm week after week I'm traveling from end to end of this nation preaching and doing mighty things for the kingdom and in every one of these meetings he has not left me without a witness how could I reject him everyone people send me text messages they say a lot of things Joshua Selman thank you your messages are changing lives your messages are doing this and that and in my mind I say our message Holy Spirit they just don't know you know that song um, what's it they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me listen if someone has volunteered to pay your school fees the day you hear the person is sick with a terminal disease, what will you do? You will run like your life depends on it. Your school fees is at stake. Is that true? The Holy Spirit is the key to my relevance. If people ever clap for me, it's because of him. So as they clap for me, I only become an usher. And I say, Holy Spirit, you are the one who deserves it. When I stand and I speak, I don't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time. But as I speak, he's the one who touches people. His power. He makes his power manifest. He's the force behind the messages of this ministry. That you hear and it does something to you you cannot explain.
how could I ignore him? How could I ignore him? Based on what? What you see in my life is a reflection of his glory. If you ignore the Holy Spirit, you have ignored beauty and glory from your life. If you have ignored the Holy Spirit, listen, God is speaking to us here. We started last week. Many of us have truly ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Koinonia. Many of us have become so busy. You have become a business mogul now. You have partners in Abuja and, and Lagos and abroad and China. You are now a great man. You are now a five-pointer. You nail it at will. There's no need for the Holy Spirit again. You are now married. No need for crying or dropping any prayer request for life partner. And there's no reason to seek him again. We must get to that point where we create a secret place. Every time I listen to Mike Mudok, he takes time to honor the Holy Spirit. And he does it generously from the depths of his heart. Ladies, imagine how your husband will feel when you come up and before you preach, you take 10 quality minutes and you just shower honor. You say, I'm a queen because he's a king. Hi. I'm married because he married me. Ah! The man is there managing all of the blessings that are coming. As soon as you finish, that car that I wanted to buy, you say, um, honey, what did you even say you wanted? Listen, many, I'm, I see, it looks like I'm using everyday joke, but I'm telling you, this is the secret. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? The reason why many people are disgraced in public is because they embarrass the Holy Spirit in secret. If you honor him in secret, he will never forget you in public. Many people come on stage. The power of God is going to move. I came all the way to let you see what God will do. And we chorus all sorts of things and get angry at the people. You don't have faith. Open now, receive. What we are meaning is, try, you know, all sorts of things. We lay hands on people, twisting their head up and down. And they say, ah, let me just fall. This man will kill me. Brothers and sisters, the absence of intimacy is always clear. You can't fake it. Hallelujah. Every time you hold this mic, you hear the voice of two people. It's just that it has been woven into one. That's the reason why I can be talking to you outside. You see that? Generally. But once it is time to come into that office, that releases our oneness you will hear another voice hmm. so every time you come to touch me you are touching two people joshua selman is a man but there is the holy spirit standing behind Hiya. when it's time to lay hands on the sick he tells me remember we're in the secret place remember the things that i taught you and so together we lay that hand and while my hand is there's, there's nothing to it but when his hand comes upon your hand, hi, suddenly, it, it happens as if you are playing. But then it's as real as anything. Sister, when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life, he amplifies your beauty. There is a level of beauty that people, they know there is something about you. It's not like you are the finest lady everywhere. But they are seeing the beauty that, it, that is interfacing both the physical and the spirit realm. The brother talks to you and he cannot sleep again. He knows he spoke to two people. Hallelujah. And so you greet someone and you tell the person, God bless you. And that word comes with an anointing because there is another personality say i am never alone say it again i am never alone there is a personality that walks with me that talks with me see if you carry this mindset if you carry this mindset it will change your life oh i'm never alone he said yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me for you are with me when i go for meetings and i see sick people 
and I see hungry people, hungry for the things of God. And I see stubborn people. There are people that when you see in a meeting, if the Holy Ghost is not with you, start crying. Because you say in Jesus' name, they are not even answering amen. You see, you, they are as complicated as whatever. You know you are in for a surprise. It's at that time you can lean on the strength of one who is greater than you. And you know that the Holy Spirit is going to do something in their lives. And someone, sometimes when I see people who come for koinonia, you know, when I follow the, the, the pictures, you see the person who came, you know that someone brought him because he's even surprised. He's just standing outside and wondering. And you know, this person does not even know why he came. The ability of the Spirit. Have you ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life? This has nothing to do with just ministry. It has to do with every area of your life. So you must respect his ministry. The Holy Ghost is a gentle man. The limit to which you allow him to come into your life is the limit to which he remains. Revelation 3.20. Let's hurry up. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Lord and Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome. Let's sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy potent Father, of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place listen it says behold i stand he was writing to the seven churches they were already saved this is not a scripture for sinners he was writing to the seven churches in asia minor but he said behold i stand like a guy comes to propose to a lady you can't just grab a lady and say you are my wife forget about those things they used to do before you are my wife and you know behold i come and i stand i seek intimacy i seek intimacy but i will not bump into your life because you have a will you can choose to reject me and i will go are you getting my point now he said behold i stand as mighty as i am i'm able to change your life but I stand. He says, and I knock. If any man hear my voice. That means you can be so distracted you do not even hear his voice. But if for any reason you hear my voice. And what? Open the door. What does it mean to open the door? Receive my ministry. Consider it that I am relevant enough. Consider it that without me, you will lose relevance. Without me, there's no spiritual power. Without me, you will struggle. That I am able to bring beauty and glory out of your life, out of your church, out of your fellowship. Consider it that you don't need to relocate. What you need is not to come closer to the people. Jesus was on the mountain, crowds came. In the desert, crowds came. All these excuses we give, they are various ways of explaining the consequences of the absence of koinonia. If my church was in Abuja, people would have come. I know that. If I had money, I would have paid for everything. I would have done beautiful backdrops. It's a lie. It's a lie. There is a presence that draws people. It's called anakazo. It's a con compelling power of the spirit believe what i'm telling you no human being can resist it no matter how stubborn you are listen this is the power that created the heavens and the earth this is the power that raised christ from the dead 
oh no you are too small to resist it when the ministry of the holy spirit is allowed and permitted in a church in a building you will see supernatural things that will amaze you the reason why things look very difficult in churches and ministries is because we have boxed the holy spirit we are embarrassed to tell the people that he is greater than us we are threatened like two business partners who have begun to fight themselves young gicho wrote a book the secret of his building the 700 thousand city in show he wrote that book i read that book years ago holy spirit my senior partner he wrote another book the fourth dimension there is more to this man you see i'm not so smart in myself come on now ah. but there is one who can bring beauty and glory out of your life but he's standing tonight listen he's knocking you've struggled all your life to be relevant man of god you have struggled you've told lies with miracles that didn't happen because of the absence of his presence and he's saying there is no need you can get into the real thing you have exaggerated the number of your church members because you are embarrassed you have said all kinds of things competing with people he's saying there is no need i can give you something authentic sister you have envied everybody you can see and the holy spirit is saying there's no need there is beauty and glory ah, yeah. he's called the spirit of glory he does something to you do you know that the holy spirit can alter your physical form your physical biological form there is there is there is a depth how many of you have seen a man who gets married to his wife and after four or five years they start looking like one another is that true it even happens to some even from relationship before they get married you say ah oh boy when did you start becoming fair say that's none of your business oneness participation how many of you have seen pastors of certain ministries look like their ministers and you know they did not try to cook it up something happened it looks like their physical appearance were altered that's what happened to the apostles in acts the book of acts they looked like jesus that's what happened to peter when they saw peter they said no peter your talk betrays you it tells you you have been peter said woman me i've not been with jesus but he had been so into oneness that even when he wanted to run away he could not he had taken up the language the character let me tell you something about oneness with the spirit let's see my dear when you become one with the holy spirit see when a spirit comes to walk with a man, the spirit begins to live out its characteristics through that man. Just like a demon spirit. Right? There was a spirit and it was the posture of that spirit, the woman who was bound for 18 years as you. When you are praying for people and you know, during deliverance sessions, you see people acting like animals and acting like snakes because the spirit that oppresses them is trying to manifest its characteristic through their faculties. So when you walk with the spirit, without struggle, that is the real revelation of grace. You start seeing the love of God at work in you. Are you seeing the point now? There are times that the Holy Spirit is grieved about certain things and you start crying physically because you are now you have there is a sharing together he can pour into you his body hallelujah there are times that the holy ghost is excited so you are praying in tongues we we'll talk about that you are praying in the secret place and the holy spirit sees that you have entered the realm of victory you cannot see it and he starts rejoicing and you start laughing you see now you have not seen it but because you are one he starts letting you share in the victory that's why when a sick body is healed the holy ghost doesn't just appear and say all right stand let me shine congregation i am the one you are the only one who is left that is your own benefit of coming into oneness and so people look and your face are on posters and billboards and people say this is the great man and you who because you have wisdom you run back and say spirit of god i'm not foolish we are together it's the biggest secret that i've learned the ministry of the holy spirit let everything in my life give way 
if you leave me with the Holy Spirit, you have not done anything to me. Hallelujah. A great man of God, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, I've shared the story here, I'll share it again. He was praying at a particular point and a great politician came to see him. Very noble man. And so when he came, one hour, the man of God was still praying. Two hours, he was just in the room. Three hours, the wife got a bit embarrassed. His daughter got a bit embarrassed and she went to knock. And then he opened the door and she entered. And she was like, Daddy, this man, Abba, attend to him, let him go. And he looked at her and said, my daughter, sit down. He said, you know why this man is here? He's here because of my relationship with the Holy Spirit. If I leave my relationship with the Holy Spirit because of him, he will never return again. Let him wait. There are many of us, as Koinonia is like this, when we see certain dignified people, we cannot worship in the presence of God because we are embarrassed. The one who makes the world clap for you. If you run away from him now, are you not foolish? Because they will not clap again. The one who has made you a celebrity. The one who took you from the wilderness. Some of us, we know where we are coming from. Hallelujah. Look how he's brought beauty and glory out of your life. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. See, my mom sent me a text. My mom sent me a text that blessed me so much. You know what she told me in the text? Um, she's with her husband in Lagos. And they sent me a text. Her now. She said, she calls me her father. So she said, my father, make sure you don't buy a car with tinted glasses because police people will disturb you. I hope you take note of that. Bless you or love you or whatever it is. I said, ah! You know what it means for a mother to be so confident that her son is a success? She knows that if I'm not going to go and carry any kind of thing and manage, she's advising me in advance. She said, buy a, don't buy a car with tinted glass. That's a level of trust and confidence. Are you getting my point? Can that be your testimony? Can your father look at you and say, son, I know you will build a house for me. Please, when you are building it, can you make the kitchen a bit larger? And he knows you are not going to say, are you joking? One plot of land? No. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, someone met me and we were talking about purpose and destiny. A good friend of mine. And he told me something. He said, sir, I'm more confident about your life than I am about my own life. It's not, he's not in, so he's just saying, when I look at you, I can guarantee that you will be a success, even more than I can guarantee my own success. And I told him, change it. Change it. There is a revelation you can have. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Everyone say after me, Holy Spirit, I open up myself. Say it seriously, Holy Spirit. I open up myself to the fullness of your ministry to the multifaceted dimensions of your ministry he said even the spirit of truth he said the world cannot do what that means there are people who do not receive this spirit the world cannot receive him because it's yet him not neither knoweth him he said for you but you know him for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you. Alos Paracletos, the helper. When the Holy Ghost comes into your life, he helps you. There are things he does not do for you, but he assists you. Let's rush. What are the components of true fellowship? Number one, the study of the word. The study of the word. These are the things you do in that secret place. The components that make up true fellowship, koinonia with the spirit. Number one, the study of the word. If you claim you are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you don't at least have a commitment, if, even if you don't have a desire, 
you must have a commitment because there are times you may not have a desire but you must have the commitment are you getting my point mm. there are times listen there are times you may not have the desire to study just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class but you have the commitment praise god what is the relevance of studying the word it gives us an understanding of the ways of god it gives us an understanding of the ways of god the thoughts of god and the mindset of god mm. we must study the word of god contained in this book listen when you listen to my teachings or you read my books for instance in that book is a communication of my persuasions is that true a book is simply a documentation of persuasions when i'm persuaded about a philosophy or an idea or a pattern of thought i document it so when you study my books it is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much you have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force saddam hussein and all of these people adolf hitler they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty but look at jesus he made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it we'll be able to align to it are you getting my point the word of god the the greek word for word there is logos and and is translated thoughts the thoughts of a man printed the thoughts the thinking pattern of a man and philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this he said let this mind let this mindset let this ideology let this frame of work this plane of judgment let it be in you which was also in christ and the word christ is christos the spirit of god hallelujah let this mind be in you that means there is a mindset everybody say mindset everybody say programming the word of god does something to you i've shared this if i if I pick, come my dear. You are a microbiology, right? Biochemistry. This is a biochemist, for instance. Watch this. Some years ago, this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry. Is that true? But there was a curriculum, is that true? That had been created with the goal of transforming her. Did they change her body? Did they injure her? They just passed her a system for a period of time and the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree so the word of god is his school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern it's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual the word of god is his thought his mindset his ideology bless you my dear so all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich, money doesn't grow on trees. Hoard as much as you can hoard. Cheat everybody. Kill if it's possible. But then when you explore the mind of God, the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom, you will find out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Now you are in conflict. There are two mindsets. Are you getting my point now? And when you submit to the word of God, you have permitted the word let means permit permit this mind hallelujah so culturally you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people then you become the big boss ah and then you come and you study that when you come into christ there is a new law there is a new operation of love that works in you hallelujah Everybody say the word of God reveals to me God's ideologies, God's perspective. And then it also reveals to you God's opinion about every matter. There are many opinions, brothers and sisters. The word of God reveals to you God's opinion. 
I'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us. Come, Shay. Listen. If I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say, just tell me. Uh -uh. The word of God. It, as a young man, you want to get married. Are you getting my point now? Culturally, you are taught, just go to the village, carry anybody that is available, save Johnny, flog it out in the marriage. Yeah, after all, you are the man. Eventually, you will survive. Two of you will be f tired of fighting and you will now sit down at the round table to discuss how to move your home forward. That's a cultural way. But according to scripture, number one, you know that it's God's will for you to marry. Male and female, he created them. Not two males, not two females. Male and female. So it is very clear that you have God did not create a man and a will. So if you find out that you are having desire for fish to marry, you know that you need to run for miracle service. There's something wrong. But listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of God. See that? If you find out you are having a desire for another man or another lady, you know that you need help. Quick. Quick. Either a retreat or prayer. Anyone. You need it quick. Now watch this. I'm showing you how the mindset of God affects you, right? When you now go to study the Bible, I'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down. And the Bible says, for this cause shall a man, not a boy. So the first question is, what makes a man? I I'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of God. And he said, shall a man leave his father and mother? That means he must be independent. And there are several things that bring for independent responsibility some level of financial security some level of mental stability are you seeing how i'm building on god's mindset leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife not his wife and other concubines his wife right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then I study from God's word. He said, children are a heritage from the Lord. Not a product of a man and a woman. They are heritage from the Lord. So, I bend to the mindset of God. Whereas, I'm the kind of person that claims, I'm a hot guy, yo. I can never do this. All this nonsense that we carry from different cultures. And you now come. I'm this. In our village, ladies kneel down and lie down and lick our leg. In our village, when ladies cook, soup is in one plate, food is in one plate. You now submit to the word of God. You either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset. Choose ye this day, the Bible says. That means you can choose. Are you getting my point now? And I say, lady, when you make up your mind and say, no, me, I'm not going to do anything. No, any man that I will give it to him. I'm not, I'm not cooking for any man. I'm this and that. We are women. I'm independent. I have my own rights too. Then you read. Wives. You first ask yourself, am I a wife with this noise I'm making? You see that? Because if you are not a wife, he was not talking to you. You can continue doing what you are doing. But if you are a wife, the Bible says, submit to your husbands in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you're one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you man you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stinks your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else
what is my confidence what what assurance do i have that i'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me he said for i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said they are thoughts of good you see the word thoughts again my mindset towards you this mindset that i propose to you like a man comes to meet a lady and says look i will take care of you if you go with me in this journey forget about what you see now we are soaking gary but at the, the end is peace that's what god is doing with his word right he's bringing you a proposal and he's saying look 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 how your mindset has made your life the quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies can you bend and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now? Number two. Asian words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have Oh, let the ancient words be I never study my Bible as if I'm doing a Bible quiz or competition. Many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions. So when you start studying, you now come and meet your friend and say, I finished Colossians today. I was just going through it. I even started Ephesians. How has it changed your life? Who cares? Who cares whether you read the book? No. Listen, don't be under pressure. It is not spirituality to say I finished my Bible 20 times. If we cannot see the fruit in your life, it's like saying I know Jonathan. Every day you are telling us you know Jonathan and we are still the same level. We say, oh God, you are lying somewhere. You are lying somewhere. Because we know the way even Jonathan's houseboy is. You are shouting every time. Jonathan is my, my, my father's brother. If not because of situation, I would have grown in his house. You are telling at a point in time we we'll know that you are telling a lie that's how it is so every time if you speak i'm a word addict i'm studying the word yet we are not seeing your life you are the first to get angry you are the first to slap people you are the first to insult people you are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit we know you have not been with god there is an absence of koinonia listen there are parameters that can measure if the word of god is growing in you the measure of the word of God in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. Are you getting my point? He said, my little children in whom I travel until Christ be formed. So I see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God. That is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord in your life experientially. Hallelujah. Take your time and study the word of God. Listen, you must be strategic about your studying the word of God. Every day we have devotionals to help us here. But you don't have all the time to study the word of God for 8 hours every day. That's not how to grow. That's a religious way. There are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. I don't study the word of God like that. Every day I look at, there are times I get up in the morning, there's no time for anything. I have so much activities. But I dedicate periodic times when I stay with the word of God intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the word and applying it in my life. How have you been studying your word? So that you can quote. Some of us even have some Bible memory aids that help us. 
Philippians 4 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, this and that and that. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jeremiah chapter this and that. Da, 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 da. And people say, Whoa, whoa, your life is not changing. You are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men. But because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy, it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit. I'm not against Bible recitation. If you stay with a man so much, you should be able to know his words. Your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two. The components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to manifest Himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere, His manifest presence, His omnipresence. The ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalmist says. But he's manifest his revealed presence. That he reveals himself for the purpose of communion. It doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. How was your day? What do you think the lady would do? The lady will say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? There is always a preparation. Because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart. He will dress the place, he will arrange it. If she likes red flowers, somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way buy red buy anything that looks like red it may be even the ox blood to him is red at least he tried he will bring it and arrange something and says i did this for you i prepared this place this is your own place sit down many of us do not know that there is a geography where god meets with men you can set up an altar a meeting place solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said oh lord let this be your resting place wherever people are if they turn to jerusalem and pray hearken to them hallelujah you can make your house or your room an altar there are people here in this church building you see them in the night they come some of them pray there are some of us our rooms there are some of us certain places some toilets some garages it doesn't matter where people just lock themselves somewhere and just say lord i have come to fellowship and you just sing songs of worship. I love you, Lord. And I lift my hands. That's fellowship, koinonia. To worship you. And you're luring him with your worship. Because he cannot resist worship. Oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my king. And your phone is ringing and you leave it there. It's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there. In what you eat. The devil is saying, keep singing. You will finish singing and eat your fingers. Let it be a sweet. And he's watching. He's watching. He's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence. Priority. Sister, you are just singing, I love you, Lord. And Prince Charming is flashing. Ha! Your body abel wants to worship Cain. is saying you, you better call now that things are working for you you have been praying and submitting prayer requests this guy is already being nice now let it be a sweet sweet sound anything you love above the secret place is an idol i don't care what it is Abraham took his son. Son, I love you. 
but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because God tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it. It's the same thing as trading your birthright for a pot of soup. Soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry. Hallelujah. When I'm spending time with God, let the whole world catch fire. Let it catch fire. It's amazing how the devil can create so much distractions. There are some of us who when we come to the presence of God, that's the time to ping. You just see a lady's hair. Say, that's the hair I've been talking to you about. Let me snap it quickly. And you become a commentator on WhatsApp and what they call it, all those things. And the devil knows when to disturb you. He waits until it's time for the presence. It's time for you to fellowship with the spirit. He now brings up all sorts of things. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, Come before him with singing. That is the protocol of his presence. Sing to the spirit. Many of you don't sing. Every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship. It's a secret of the anointing. That's why you see us take our time. That's why you see these people standing. You don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend. I'm on stage and they're on stage with me, even if it's for 10 hours. And the keyboard is playing. Why? Because he's worshipping. We are creating the atmosphere. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The prophet knew this. And so he said, bring me a mistrial. I need, I cannot talk. I need to bring, because the Holy Spirit was not resident in them. He would come. And he said, there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence. That's what we do during our traditional festivals. You see some people who just tie some things around. And they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools. And when the spirit they are calling finally arrives, you will know it has arrived. Confusion, accidents, all sorts of things. Registering his presence. I'm here. You ask for it in India. Many of you have watched them, they blow flutes and they sing, and those serpents begin to come out, and people come to watch. Music is a law of spiritual operation, it's not just a principle. That's why, when you listen to all these classical music, orchestras, you know, and, and all this contemporary worship, they do something to your spirit. I have a bad voice so what you are not presenting a special number it's called the secret place even if you are not called into the ministry of worship god is not complaining he loves it the way it is sing any song compose your own song hallelujah have you seen a lady in love and the guy said i want to sing for you because his friend said that's what i did and the guy is not a good musician he doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song. He's mixing words. He's just singing all sorts of songs. And because the lady loves, she's saying, wow, you mean you learned this song today? And the guy is saying, you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal. And he's making all sorts of mistakes. Listen, I'm showing you something about some of you. It has happened to you. That's why you're laughing. You are seeing how this guy is doing his best. He's even closing his eyes. He's communicating his passion. On a very good day, you'd have gotten up to work, but you appreciate that's how the Holy Ghost is. He's not complaining. He's not complaining. We can tell you here that your voice is not good, but when you are in the sea, go off key, go up, go down, sing bass, sing anything. It's you and him. It's called koinonia. There are not many people invited. He, not them that dwell in the secret. The secret place is not a congregation it's a place where you meet it's a love affair it's an intercourse it's called koinonia dance with me oh, remember our song lover of my soul to the song of all songs this is to the Holy Spirit. Would you dance with me, O oh, lover of my soul? 
to the song of all songs. Let's sing one more time. I'm making you fall in love with him. That's me. Be your lover of my soul to the song of all songs. Listen, listen, listen. And while you are singing this song, suddenly his shakina fills the room. You know he's in that place. I mean, your whole body is shaking. This guy is responding. Your, your love song is attracting him. And you're just shaking. And you're wondering. Scriptures are just coming in your mind. And as that is happening, God is talking to people. Bless him. Bless her. Favor him. All that is happening in the secret place. There are sicknesses and challenges there are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying oh lord about this cgpa i just saw my cgpa five carryovers and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing it brings him and that song begins to comfort you whereas you were crying about something after meeting with him you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king you have a challenge in your life you're struggling with a habit you're struggling with something and you go to his presence and you begin to sing and say lord something else is taking your place in my life and i'm reporting to you i'm a faithful bride i'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life i'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place and as a jealous god like a man who is fighting for his bride he will come and say let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me, your lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Listen, there is not there are people when you tell secrets about your life, you are in trouble. It's as you would have just gone to nta and announce to the whole world because they will tell everybody they are just don't tell anybody the next person will tell sister b say i did i don't know you if anything happens i've never met you but the holy ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain i don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason the holy spirit will never quarrel you you come with your weaknesses broken you come with all sorts of things when men reject you when that guy says you're good for nothing you refuse to sleep with me go you coming back to the secret place that's the place of strength men of god who do not have the secret place when persecution starts and now see the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution if you are not a man of the secret place you will never last men will question the source of your anointing men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this men will question all kinds of things when men shout and people oh you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages i wish so i wish so when i get all those things i look forward to my hour of prayer and i just go into his presence and i lie down flat the one who can love me the way i am men will tell you you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the Holy Spirit. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place. And if you don't find it, you don't say yes to him. So when one brother comes because he likes you, he now wears suit and comes for koinonia. When he's talking to you, you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked. And you say, my brother, you talk like you're a Christian, but I don't see that signature. Meaning you are not a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. Worship. Do you, do you spend time? I'm telling you, when I'm in the presence of God, 
I'm not Apostle Joshua Selman. I throw away all of those things and I roll before him and I cry like a baby. And this is how I prepare for meetings. Brothers and sisters, this is how I prepare for meetings. I talk to the Lord and I say, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down in my mind, I'm saying, okay, Holy Spirit, worship team is now ministering. We are ready to go and I can just feel him saying, go, go, go and do it. Prove to the people that you are not alone. Ah! and has he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and it pained me because I know the brother. I said, such a virtuous lady. So you are already trying to, you've not gotten married, but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away. That's the same thing you will do when you get married. But the Holy Ghost, he will give you a garment, you want to stain it outside. When you come, you see him holding soap, already waiting for you. While you are trying to explain, he says there's no need. That you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel. To the song of all songs. Can we sing this song just once as I prepare to round up? Would you dance with me, your lover of my soul? To the song of all You dance me, me, your lover of my soul to the song of all songs. Just the voices, just one more time from the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me, your lover? my soul to the song of all songs the third component of intimacy with the holy ghost is prayer the first is the study of the word the second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship god blesses you by a keyboard god blesses you by a guitar are you getting my point even if it's only one key learn it cfg and the minor just sit down and lie down that's all you know you are not learning it to sing somewhere one day people will come and listen to you i remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called amber sage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in downfordio and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve would just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room. when you see a man of the secret is ever looking young it's not about eating well he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither you see a man of 60 years 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is if it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long something happens to you do you believe me 
absolutely prayers especially praying in the spirit praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged i came from an orthodox background and i understand what it means i went to a, a seminary and i i have touched different orthodox circles so i understand the way pentecostals taught it was a terrible way nobody would they, 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 they and and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the holy spirit came upon people he made them idiots they did not teach us that tongues was a mystery it was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion it's a secret code of communication we were not taught like that i'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the holy ghost i didn't understand anything the man was teaching i was feeling like sleeping the only thing i know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs and he said that's it praying in understanding tongues that's all i remember and then we sang one song hallelujah jehovah reigns hallelujah jehovah reigns hallelujah jehovah reigns give him the glory that he deserves that's all and then we got filled with the holy ghost when i started praying in tongues i was wondering i said ah oh god i hope i'm not just joining everybody and lying maybe they receive the real thing because some people were falling me i didn't fall nothing happened but i was praying at least i doubted that thing for days but i began to see transformation in my life in js 2 i was made the timekeeper of the whole school there was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy, quarter to five, every day the Holy Ghost would wake me, physically. Someone would tap me, quarter to five, quarter to five. We had a matron called Miss Rhoda, wonderful woman, she's gone to be with the Lord now. One day, when I woke up, five on the dot, I would ring the bell. She called me and laid hands, she said, you're an exceptional person. I would study just once. I'm serious. I never have to read again. Once. It was supernatural. Then we started one, one prayer evening meeting called Operation Catacruz. <laughs> we were tired of the nonsense that was happening around. So we, myself and five guys, we were like the apostles of the school. Five of us, very small. We did wonderful things wonderful things one of them was a sickler he was like our peter and all through that time that that devil of infirmity left oh we did mighty things i prayed for people who were stammerers and all of a sudden the stammer the stammering will leave i for us it was not a big deal because nobody taught us that this thing was great you need honorarium you're a great man no we just did our thing and then at a point they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching they brought a lot of people they thought and we knew it was us they were talking to and then eventually we threw away all these things of god it was something in my spirit and when we threw away all those things it was in less than two months our leader died i was with him the final moment in the hospital his ribs were swollen that sickness came back what he was delivered from they were born triplets one died there's only one who is alive now and i looked at him in the hospital I told him don't worry you'll be fine little did i know that that would be the last time because we ignored the ministry of the holy spirit i cried one day many years when i realized that that was the reason we left him we actually asked him to walk out of our lives take your place take your place i will never ask you to walk out of my life take your place take your place that gentleman died most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things i tell you many of them today some of them are drunkards some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know the holy spirit blah 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 
some of you right now you are at the verge of throwing away the only thing you have not thrown is praying in tongues you've thrown every other thing prayers prayer opens us up to sensitivity it opens us up through sensitivity sorry to the promptings and the impulses of the spirit the ministry of prayer opens us up makes us sensitive you can get more of that on my teaching spiritual perception opens your organs of interacting with spiritual things and then you begin to move in certain operations of the spirit the word of knowledge the knowing of the spirit the witness of the spirit all of these things are activated in the place of prayer prayer empowers us to hear his voice the bible says while they prayed while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them not while they sat down while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them he said separate me paul and barnabas while they prayed let's hurry up number four corporate fellowship with the brethren components that bring intimacy or components of true fellowship corporate fellowship with the brethren very important acts chapter 13 verse 2 the bible says while they prayed and fasted they prayed they sang the holy ghost said unto them not unto one man let me tell you the importance of corporate fellowship like this it gives you the opportunity to partake of the dealings of the spirit in the life of others are you getting my point now so levels that your personal intimacy with the holy spirit has not brought you when you come together is like a corporate receiving hallelujah psalms 133 verse 1 says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity and he begins to describe it he says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bird down to his cat even to his garment he said for there god has commanded the blessing behold how good and pleasant it is the bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one accord. The Holy Ghost never came until they were together. There is the mystery of corporate fellowship. Not just emptying, sitting down and occupying empty pews. No. Fellowship. Do you know that you can be together as a congregation but not have fellowship? Because there's bitterness, there's anger, there's competition, there's party spirit, seditions, and all kinds of things. But when you come, that's why one of our core values, the first of our core value as a ministry is love. Love, not power, not anointing, not intimacy, love, love, the bond of perfectness. There is only fellowship when there is true love. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter laughter absence of laughter is a sign that something is wrong corporate fellowship what does it do it opens us to other dimensions of his dealings it creates oneness in the body the bible says in acts chapter in, in ephesians chapter 4 it says till we all come to the unity of the faith the unity of the faith the same understanding as a body finally what are the rewards of true fellowship let me round up with this i have to hurry up remember our topic is koinonia the ancient secrets ancient secrets to power so what is the reward what is the reward what is the reward ah, be sensitive now because i sense the power of the holy spirit I'm telling you, every time I just begin to talk about the Holy Spirit, it's like, it's like a magnet that you cannot resist. Although our time is fast spent, but somebody must receive something tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. What are the rewards of fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I'll give you just three of them. Number one, the reward, the child, the proceed of that intercourse between you and the spirit the same way when a man meets his wife something leaves that man to his wife and over time a child is born that child 
is the consummation of their oneness is that true when you stay with the holy spirit when koinonia is at work in your life certain things must happen number one authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power i said authentic because there are all kinds of things all kinds of things right now authentic spiritual power authentic spiritual power the anointing for miracles the anointing for signs and wonders they are a product of intimacy brothers and sisters listen to me if you've been called into the apostolic ministry or prophetic ministry or teaching or pastoral any of the fivefold ministry you need the anointing for supernatural miracles signs and wonders men can forget what you say but they will never forget the impact of your meeting upon their lives many pastors are struggling they keep speaking but there is no grace there is no anointing there is no authentic anointing i'm not talking about laying hands on people that your words they do something to the physical bodies of those listening they do something to their minds the words do something the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the words he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me he has smeared me with oil where did that happen in the in the secret place while i was fellowshipping with the holy ghost a deposit of his ability rubbed off on me and i come out of the secret place with that ability the bible says the spirit drove jesus to the wilderness and he was there he was there for how long now 40 days and at the end of it the bible says he returned with the in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit he returned in the power of the spirit you want to see authentic power you want to see the anointing of the spirit brothers and sisters i believe in impartation from men of god but the holy spirit is the greatest custodian of the anointing you stay with him you have the anointing without measure dimensions of his anointing comes upon your life brothers and sisters listen it has nothing i don't care how weak you are right now if you stay with the holy ghost man woman boy girl including the little ones you will contact something that is tangible the world may criticize you but they cannot deny what is at work in your life you are the power in me you are the fire at work when you see mighty works there is an anointing you are my ever-present helper holy spirit ah, yeah. and he anoints you so an ordinary man brothers and sisters an ordinary timid joshua selman when his anointing comes upon you look at samson he was a man who was weak but when the anointing came upon him he did mighty things and men will look at you they will see small you but there is big jesus there is big holy spirit so men will invite you for meetings thousands of people and when you walk through and see those wheelchairs and those blind eyes you know that it's not just about talking nonsense it's either it is there or not and you stretch your hands and you speak and say in the name of the lord jesus blind eyes open and you are hearing people shouting i can see and you are flattered yourself because you know that you are not the custodian of this this is what happens in koinonia he blesses us with his presence and so we can command devils to go and they must leave and we can command sicknesses to go and we can speak to blood conditions and change them and we can speak to situations and alter destinies a dear lady of ours wrote her exams and her work and, and when the results came out you know she was so excited sent me a text yesterday i met with her briefly today and this lady just nailed it on point i mean i looked i said goodness this is great the holy ghost can take a weak person mary said how shall these things be oh lord how will i have an international ministry as weak as i am how can this guitar produce an international ministry 
oh lord is it true that one day i will stand before the nations and god is saying do not underestimate the power of the anointing upon the life of a man they will pay you they will lodge you in hotels and you are there wondering oh god no there is this treasure you are an earthen vessel but there is a treasure the only way to take advantage of it is to carry you along because it's in you same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh i'm anointed say i'm anointed your love that rescued the earth lives in me listen brothers and sisters it's on the strength of the secret place that we can tell you you will never go back the same you see that that is what is responsible many of you came here probably for the first time you just said let's come and see what happened and you came and you encountered the anointing of the spirit if you are a preacher in this place stop doing ministry without the anointing you're going to fight everybody around you because of anger you will hate everybody around you because of competition and intimidation many preachers are angry with anointed people today because they they are unwilling to subscribe to the terms of authentic power it happens once in a while it just happens by magic and then when they see this happen in the lives of people especially when the person is a young man because it's not an issue of age whoever can pay that price the power that truly brings revival and transformation brothers and sisters is one thing to gather people but it's another thing for their lives to be changed there are many churches that the lives of the members are not being changed. Can I tell you the truth? I know that crowd is not an ultimate basis to measure growth and impact. But let me tell you sincerely, when people are being changed, they will come again and again and camp there. That this guy was an armed robber. He was a bad person, an occultist. All of a sudden, he comes to Koinonia for three or four weeks. There are so many people, especially many of the leaders and the workers today. By the grace of God, I know how these people were when they came. Some of them were cultists. Some of them were all sorts of people. But the power of the Spirit. As a minister, when people come to your congregation, you don't screen them and throw the bad ones. There are no bad eggs in the house of God. Because his anointing can change any man. So a man comes who is stubborn. They say, we have tried and tried. And he said, no, not when the authentic power of God comes. You can handle any congregation. As a pastor, they can post you anywhere and it does not matter. They post you to a church of 10 members in one year. It's an avalanche. Because of the anointing. He said, it shall come to pass. Isaiah 10, 27. He says, the burden shall be taken from off your neck and the yoke from your shoulders and it shall be destroyed not because you went to school not because you can speak english because of the anointing there's too much talk in the body of christ because there is no anointing charles and francis hunter of blessed memory wrote a book they said that one miracle is worth a thousand words how true authentic anointing Acts chapter 19, 11 and 12. The Bible says, and God wrought special miracles. God wrought special miracles. Not just ordinary miracles. Brothers and sisters, if you walk in extraordinary miracles, the only thing you will go through that is bad is criticism. But the hand of God is like a signature. And you write upon the lives of men. He is alive. That's why we will continue doing what we are doing. That's why anyone who comes here will truly be blessed. And we say it with absolute certainty. Not on the strength of ourselves. The Bible says we are not sufficient in ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letters. Because the letter kills. But the spirit gives life. Number two. The second reward koinonia is multiplied grace multiplied grace multiplied grace what does multiplied grace bring in your life ease of operation write it down 
i know many struggling ministers they are doing well but you know that this this they are doing ministry as if it's a it's a cross to kill them no sir no sir jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light if that yoke is killing you then it's not from god hallelujah ease of operation in your ministry ease of operation in your job There are many people who struggle just for little promotion. You have to struggle and bribe and pass. No, 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 no. When there is multiplied grace, the Bible says great grace was upon them. Great grace. Acts chapter 4 verse 31 to 33. When they prayed, the building shook. And the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Okay, so just write it. We may not run go there because of time. Our time is up. Number three, the last one, and this is the most important I want you to carry tonight, is that the products, the benefits, the reward of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the release of your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. Please never forget this. This applies to every one of us now. It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed. You can be gifted and it can be killing you. But when your gift is anointed. Ha! Huh? Your gifts and abilities become anointed. What does it mean to be anointed? It means it is activated and empowered to produce supernatural results. So your singing ministry, you have great gifts. But when he anoints that gift, all of a sudden, your keyboard that you are playing, suddenly you see wheelchairs standing up just because mike is playing that's a gift that has been anointed someone will come up here and just be reciting a poem or be dancing you may belong to a rap group or a dancing ministry and you are dancing and sick bodies are healed that's an ability that has been anointed many of us are gifted and we've spoken about gifts but many of us our gifts are not anointed this is my beloved son he has always been there. But now, whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Listen. Stop trying to draw talents or draw resources. Forget about those things. Concentrate on the presence of God. When your gifts are anointed, people will come. When they come, they will come together with their own gifts and their own anointings. Listen. I never for once, by the grace of God Almighty, look at all the brilliant people. Let me tell you, I believe that this ministry has one of the best, excellent, and most effective workforce. And I say this sincerely from the depths of my heart. Hallelujah. From the ushers, the worship team, there is excellence at our level. The prayer department, men who are committed, you think they are just. I never, how would I have known them? Are you getting my point? I did not need to worry. When you stay in the secret place and your gift becomes anointed, distant shores and the islands will see your light as it right. Yes, you are a billionaire CEO, but until your gift is anointed, you will sit down there. Stay in the secret place. Let your gift, let your business acumen be anointed and you will do wonders. Sister, you're, you have God blessed you with beauty, but it's not anointed. That's why it is trivialized. You stay in the secret place and let it be anointed. The rod of Moses was a great rod, but it was not anointed. When he dropped it in the presence of God, the place of intimacy, God said, now pick up that rod. It's no longer an ordinary rod. He said, with this rod, you will do signs and wonders. Your academics is great, but it has not brought you any blessings because it is not yet anointed. Stop looking for resources. When you draw people, they will come into your life with their resources and abilities. When you contend for an anointing that can solve a millionaire's problem, he will come with his millions. 
there are many people who try to sit down and learn all kinds of gimmicks to raise money and run ministry how much money can you raise to run ministry stay in the secret place and while you are in the secret place you will bless a man who will come with millions and say it's a privilege to so ah! ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will see listen i'm telling you this will come when god gives us the vision to start building and by the grace of god when this ministry has entered the next season our job is to remain in the secret place it will start attracting all sorts of people they will come from different countries you watch and see they will sponsor the tv satellites and the rest it's not in my ambition for once to think of how it will be done your job is have the potentials footballers brothers and sisters footballers that cannot speak english receive millions of dollars per week because of their gift they never knew that you need a coach. They don't even know Adidas or Puma. All they know is that they master the art of playing with that ball. And people rush and say, please endorse our product. During Olympic, one little girl, 15 years or thereabout, America's sweetheart, little black girl who was doing exceptional things. This lady could, you know, do all of those cartwheel and all, all of those gymnastics. And she did it so well. By the next day, that lady was on the face of many privileges in America. She doesn't know anything about marketing. But the gift of a man. When anointed. It will call the relevant people. Right now we don't have people who are professionals and experts in, in, in launching satellites and doing this. Don't worry. When you stay in the secret place they will come. One day they will come. I have seen in my visions white men and people. There was a time, seven partners, multi billionaires. I've seen it many times in my visions. And they'll come and say, God has instructed us that you and your ministry, you are part of our kingdom commitments for life. Stay in the secret place. Stop looking for houses and cars. Don't insult yourself. You're not that cheap. What you have is valuable. A day will come, they will fly you in the private jets, but you are not carried away. Remember, it's you and the Holy Ghost in that plane. You say, Holy Spirit, you promised me and you have kept your promise. It doesn't fail. The key to commanding uncommon favor is when your gifts are anointed. They will draw people from all over. God is speaking to someone here. We're rounding up. Listen, brothers and sisters. The key to timeless relevance. Relevance, regardless of geography or dispensation. Is when you have gifts that are anointed. They will draw nations. They will draw nations. Not people, nations. The Bible says you shall call on one person and nations will answer. Say, I'm gifted. And tonight, my gift will be anointed. There are many people here tonight is the last time you will be at this level. Take seriously what I'm saying. When God anoints your singing ministry, you see, if God does not anoint you, the other way is to start begging everybody, please, I have an album, will you buy it? Please, I have this, sponsor me. Sam, help me. When you are going for ministration, carry me along. You see people passing all kinds of complimentary cards. I'm an anointed man. Something happened in my meeting. 20 people fell under the anointing. Invite me. That is gift that is not anointed. Because when you are anointed, when you are anointed, people will love you. He said because of the ointment, so do the virgins love you. It's, I know he was talking about relationship, but it's a principle. Gentiles will not come to you. They will come to your light. They can criticize you, but they will never be able to resist you. You will see, I, I keep sharing it. Did you know that people bless my mother today? People call this woman of God and bless her and sow seeds and do all kinds of things. And that is only the beginning.
the secret of relevance you will never go out of fashion when you stay in the secret place that's why i say the greatest publicity men of god who are always outside running around trying to scrouge for ministry ministry and uh, what do they call it a connection and ministry no 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 stay in the secret place jesus was in the manger the white men carried their gifts they started tracing the stars the wise men they were tracing it where is this one who was born he was there lying down they took gold frankincense myrrh. these were great men they took it angels were announcing him he was there quietly remain in the secret place and you will see that people are talking about you everywhere from criticism somebody will say why are they criticizing this person let me find out and then he hears a message and say i know why they are criticizing you now while you're there quiet if you are talking and advertising yourself your grace is not anointed let her walk speak for her at the gates listen the secret to entering rest is that the anointing comes upon your gift you will rest indeed the bible says let us therefore labor this is not about struggle brothers and sisters please hear me the anointing of the holy spirit the fruit great grace your gift your ability your talent it brings rest and establishment it eliminates the need for envy and competition when your gifts are anointed truly you will find no reason for envy and competition when i hear that men of god this one is trying to throw this one this one is trying to throw this i just turn to god and i say lord i'm grateful thank you for all Da, 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 da. I can't remember the song Juanita Bynum Precious memories That you left with us I just want to thank you Lord I appreciate you for your love Finally have come this far Beautiful song No competition brothers and sisters You become too exceptional You insult yourself by creating competition There is no reason I always wondered why Benny He loved every man of God I found out later on There was no reason for competition Who is now going to compete with him Based on what? Healing the sick or the anointed You only compete When your gifts are not anointed So you are Any man of God that comes into a place You are threatened and that's what is creating a lot of hatred in the body of Christ. There are men of God when they hear the names of other men of God. There are men of God when they hear the name of Joshua Selman. It's as if they've had the name of a devil. It's not because they hate me. The solution is not to criticize me. The solution is to rise to the place of the anointing. Every time your gift is anointed, you will love everyone around you. Is God speaking to someone? There are some of you who are pastors of different ministries. Some of you fellowships, groups, churches. I want to speak to you. Never find yourself in competition and envy. Let the grace upon people challenge you. But not to cause you to resent people. And you look forward. I can only imagine how many people have been looking forward to hearing scandal about me. So that they will justify that everything they have said is true. There is a hand that lifted me. It will uphold me till the end And I will not be afraid There's no need for competition When your grace is anointed, brothers and sisters When you criticize an anointed man Those you are talking to will go and find out why you are angry Because they will say, why is this thing personal to you? <laughs> and then you end up publicizing the person again because the Lord is my light and he's the light of my life and I will not be afraid the superiority of the presence of God above any enchantment and any ordinance when you see the ordinances that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail is because the ark has not been lifted Tonight we have come in this place.
to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people to say lord if i want you for a few minutes just suspend the issue of job or whatever whether it is job or the issue of delay it is still the same jericho causing it any part of jericho is still jericho are you hearing what i'm saying the jericho that causes failure is the same jericho that causes barrenness it is still jericho the bible didn't say jericho do you know look at the interesting thing jericho fell flat but the woman who stayed in the fence how god delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand but the bible tells us everything fell down flat to break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It's to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, brothers and sisters, we're about to pray, but I plead with you in the name of the Lord. To believe this mystery as simple as it looks and you will watch the wonder in your life stop focusing on physical things you will cheat yourself a thousand times nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own if anything on earth stands there is a force keeping it there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain to break every chain Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen, I have seen anointed men and women of God, people I know love God with all their heart, but they can never prevail in ministry because they have been fighting physically they do everything and sometimes you wonder and say ah, look how great this brother is look how great this sister is is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it hallelujah listen people make all kinds of gifts for me as you can imagine people make all kinds of gifts and sometimes i see what people do and i'm shocked I say life is so unfair how can this brother this sister be this gifted and yet be begging and you see someone come out from somewhere and priesthood goes before him and in one week his life has changed they can even be sarcastic priesthood will make them take life for granted there is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life please hear me there are families here listening you have done all you know why don't you allow god allow the ark come into your home tonight and let it go around jericho allow the ark come into your life tonight let it go around jericho and you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself hallelujah I was told recently about a young man very nice wonderful young man who loves god everything you know in life including good things fight him and recently i think something happened they stole a phone and the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy and he was sitting down the man kept the phone there and police came and took two of them together 
I got a text. The person sent me a text. And when he narrated everything that was happening, I usually don't call people back. But I was touched. I called him. I said, where are you? He said, Apostle, look at my life. Nothing works. I said, how did you get to the police station? He said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him. You think that's ordinary? Maybe that young man, breakthrough is coming for him. Another thief from somewhere steals, comes to drop a phone close to you. Does the police not have common sense to probe and they carry you together? Because there is a spirit coordinating this. It looks like coincidence. Someone just falls from a chair. Just a little chair like this. And all of a sudden, one side of him paralyzes. It's a lie. It's not that chair that paralyzed him. Be smart. People fell from trees plucking mangoes. And they were fine. They cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away. You fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg. No. A, a coincidence navigated. The chair was just the scapegoat. It's not about the chair. Tonight, we are going to pray. Before I begin to minister. You are going to say, Satan so you have deceived me through this situation i've been focusing on the situation whereas it is never really about the situation it is about jericho attempting to stand and challenge me i thought it was all about job i thought it was all about marriage i thought it was all about children i thought it was all about my background now i'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem provided jericho is standing there but joshua gather the priests gather the priests listen look at me i want you in the mind of your spirit look at that job issue look at that issue and say I will no longer be deceived you are not the problem the problem is jericho it is never that the business cannot work it is never that helpers cannot come once jericho is still standing here nothing can go in nothing can come out lift your voice and begin Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established in life. Lift your voice and pray.
Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood. The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says thou listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon Are we together and so the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight you will not need it the moon the sun and moon they are important but i'm introducing something jehovah god himself will be the light that sponsors your altar the same way listen listen that men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m when there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family i tell you the truth when we begin to pray and i begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems, your frustration continues. I can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force. Hear me. All of them, the same electricity is causing this fan to run. The same electricity is causing the mic to work. If you want a shutdown, off the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministering lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asks can receive it lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god
Lord, why the circle of tragedies? One tragedy after another. One tragedy. Hallelujah. 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 Please just, just be silent for a moment. I want to start ministering now. Let's just, the Lord is giving me instructions. Just, just be silent. Stand where you are. Um, something is happening inside, outside, everywhere. The Lord is showing me something very strange. Now, um, let me just describe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that looks like um, this thing people wear. What's the name? This thing that looks like a um, lady's thing that men wear. That, that looks like a... Yes, that, that thing. That's what I'm seeing on many people. And the Lord is telling me on everyone that I see that thing in. There is a very strange deliverance because that I'm hearing hidden glory. And I want to pray. Please, you don't, don't shout, don't do anything. Just let me flow. You start bringing those people out. I'm going to pray now for those group of people. I'm seeing it. Because I'm seeing that those people, no matter what you do, your glory is never seen. You will struggle and try. But nothing ever happens. Now in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands just silence everywhere father I'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that I see by the power of priesthood I come as an act bearer an envoy tonight and Lord I decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out i prophesy i decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head i'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go i command liberty they must go i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos Kapatariata and Teketa Kaskotariataji. Rakatoka Tabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho. Covered by the fence of Jericho. Pakapata Kato Sabrakatalia. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's, let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals. But it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now. Know that God is visiting your family. Lord I pray now. I release the sword the sword of the lord in the name of jesus to every family if there is a family here whose glory has been buried nobody rises where are they i decree and declare now by the anointing of the holy ghost parakata. i don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here but in the name of jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be emancipation emancipation for every family hidden glory hidden glory the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and then we beheld his glory The Lord is still touching people. The Lord is still touching people. That's why you came. You have done the listening. Let me pray now. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Something serious is going to happen here now. Now, I want to pray a very serious prayer. The Lord is leading me to pray this prayer. I just had in my spirit altars of poverty. Hold on. Just keep your hands lifted. Father, I'm praying. You spoke to my ears altars of poverty. If there is any family here in an ordinance, Shekes Katash, Shabrakatodopa Sabariadabaladaba. Under that cause, nothing works. There is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let there be deliverance now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Altars of poverty. Everywhere overflow one, overflow two, overflow three online. If there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege, I decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight. For all of you in front here, I speak to the spirits. You know my voice. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you let them go now. One, two, three, go, go. Out of them now. Out of every one of their destinies. Out of their lives. Shekatos Kabariata. I invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives. Release their families now. Release their destinies now. You know the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a vision now you know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money that's what i'm seeing in the spirit like people with only trousers sold and money this is exchange of destinies i believe that this is very prophetic let me be honest i know some of you may not believe it but the destiny you are living is not your own a king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive there are men that exchange destinies they they a king carried his future and said child the death i'm supposed to die you die it there are people like that the destiny god allocated for you you know this is not your life your dreams and your vision show something else in the name of jesus pray now lift your hands i declare the spirit that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the holy ghost at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated i command now at the count of three be set free one two three be free now be free now be free now everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Oh, Sephia, Sephia, Sephia. Like Sephia, I'm hearing a name, Sephia. Who is that, please? Let's, let's hurry up. There is a lot to do. I want us to settle down, really pray for the sick. Sephia, who is that? Arise. Samalama, Nanina, Namatia. 
her eyes say her eyes your name is Sophia how about you madam the Lord will locate the person I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to her eyes say I'll pray for all of you but in the name of Jesus Christ I deliver this lady now this lady on red I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone for you it's over now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the anointing of the Holy Spirit be set free right now Sophia the Lord bring liberty liberty now I command those altars to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing of the Holy Ghost bad luck bad luck I take it out of your life the spirit of I'm seeing a lot of bad luck I take it out of your life now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there is a lady a physical person appeared to you in the room this is a woman whose face you know like a relative physically where is that person please someone uh, you were not dreaming appeared to you and there was a conversation from that day your life never became this please don't be ashamed i want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly who is Ola? i'm hearing a name Ola. Ola. i don't know if that's the full name but there's Ola. o-l-a there's someone with that name Ola. please don't come out if it's not your name who is this huh your name is Ola. i want to pray for you look at me rejoice breakthrough has come to your family this lady i'm i'm kai look at the evil and the witchcraft i see over this lady's family all these people are please help me find out why are they here all of them their names are Ola. interesting come that lady with cap come your salvation has come come this lady with lift your hands over now over now over now calm down madam come i'm seeing what happened yes a woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be able physical physically are you seeing what i'm saying look at this when was that last year may she appeared face to face and tell me it shall never will be well be with you no matter how whatever you take that you are not feeling fine the medicine will not work and from that hold on from that day something started moving in your body yes it will move and come to your back and come to your chest area look at this are, are you seeing a swelling here you are seeing this a woman appears to her i prophesy to someone here jacas koto parakatia empreketoso bataria talikata anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life i curse those people now I curse those people now. I curse those people now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Madam, I deliver you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now in the name of Jesus. The living and the dead don't have anything in common. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is speaking to me. There are some of you, all you see is dead people. All you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people i'm prophesying lift your hands the anointing of the spirit is coming on such people now in the name of jesus if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead by the fire of the holy ghost i command a separation now the spirit of hades i speak to you the spirit of hades christ has triumphed over you 
Oh death, take away your sting. Take away your sting. Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person. I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit. Whose destiny is that? Among these people standing. Open, 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 open now. I command that destiny. Open. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You came alone? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If, I'm, if I don't talk, are you a last, sir? No, don't, don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. This is stroke. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my body. This is what I'm saying. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear. This lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical, in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical. But I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you standing here. My, my brother. This gentleman come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer. Sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This row. I'm seeing deliverance. Chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing. Chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family. Just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata. Jakaske barika to siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. Yes, so one of my son friend brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are. Where, where did you together. come from? I come from uh, Samaru. From of, Samaru. Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The in my life, in my life must, end. must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I will eat. I will eat the fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus, my dear, don't be embarrassed. Eh? Be careful with men. Come. 
I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people, but be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus. For the last time now, an anointing will come on you. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, everybody. Gentlemen, when it's time to pray for the sick, we'll pray for you. Huh? Just be patient. Please help him so that he doesn't strain himself. All of you lift your hands. One scripture and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now. Why are you here, my dear? You are with him? Oh, is your daddy? What? Okay. Since then, there is something that has been working on his body. Like you had an accident? Leg. Yes, sir. Okay, and what happened? And since then, something has been working on his body, on his stomach, like snake. At times, the thing will... Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it was never about accident, you see. Accident was just the condition that made this happen. I saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again. But the Lord would destroy it. Eh? Just be patient. We want to pray now. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 15. Quickly please. 6 to 11. Exodus 15. We're going to do a quick walk. We need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Next verse, to 11. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up right as an heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. To 11. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw up my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Next verse. Thou didst blow with thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty water. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, comma, fearful in praises, doing, not delivering, doing wonders. That's what you're about to see now. Lift your hands. He said, I will pursue, I will overtake my lost my desire will fall upon the people of god i want to pray listen deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down is 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 bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a pattern a separation the bible says the river separated teeth and hither separation to allow you move i want to pray are you ready now remember that after they moved the seventh time, it was a shout, the healer. A shout, not just any shout, a shout that was sent like a word. And the Bible says the walls of Jericho fell down flat. That shout is what you are about to do. But let me issue a command in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one whom I serve and whose I am, in the name of Jesus I declare, over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of god's people as they shout this shout wherever they are i command those spirits he said when they hear my voice they will run out of their hiding i command not only an exposition but a total separation are you ready to shout jesus at the count of three one two Three. In the name of Jesus, I command that fire.
to fall every power every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment go now go now go now every enchantment paparakato soto preketelekata every enchantment every enchantment be free now hold on hallelujah i usually don't do this until i'm directed hallelujah i usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right i just want to pass through you don't have to touch me except it is not god that has called this meeting if there is a force and a spirit it must be exposed as i pass you in the name of jesus thank you father i decree and declare right now by the anointing of the holy ghost every power every force every power every force every power every force you must go now now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus as i pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ In the name of Jesus Christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands I'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the Spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you Jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in Jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of Jesus ordinances be broken now I'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of Jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ be free now in the name of Jesus as I'm passing close to you and anointing is causing every power let them go the spirit of the lord is telling me to stand here right now in jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now i came here because i know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place I want to pray for you i'm standing here my god look at the oppression that i see just standing here i'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right i want all of you to shout jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three shake it take a takata be free now be free now in the name of jesus i command my god please help them jesus christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now be free now help them be free now lift your hands overflow three i'm praying for you are you ready to shout jesus again there are many of you you try to move forward but the force keeps holding you as you shout jesus now you're going to see something leave you are you ready father all those who have been held captive, i declare that as they shout jesus let your fire of deliverance come upon them one two three i release you now i release you now I release you now go forward i release you now delay broken i release you now i release you now i release you now i release you now in the name of jesus
Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to pray for everybody. But the Lord is saying there are some of you here. The call of God is upon your life. But there are altars fighting you. I'm about to release you. Oh God, I'm seeing 17. One seven. Where are they, oh God? Right now, to the back. Where are they? They have the call of God. But an altar of darkness. Tying down their lives. Mata soto kata. Be free now. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Look up, please. There are 11 of you. The Lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family. And the anointing, that anointing of that Joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people. Lord, where are they? To the back. Right to the back. That anointing, a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 please open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray great grace great grace great grace great grace new season, new season. Mama, look at me. It's over. Over. Forever. Over. 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 He's going to use you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please everyone pray in the spirit. 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 Please pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Overflow one, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen, please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness, overflow one. I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One. I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Kata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
i break every force every yoke of darkness hallelujah are you pregnant come i'm seeing an evil spirit let her go now in the name of jesus christ let her go by the anointing of the spirit i release the destiny of this baby you will not lose this baby in the name of jesus christ help her this lady praying in tongues in the name of jesus christ the grace for dreams and visions the lord is releasing it upon you great for dreams and visions hallelujah now i'm going to walk across this crowd please i just want you to release your faith release your faith and receive something now as i walk through i'm seeing altars and they are living right now thank you jesus father let there be deliverance right now right now right now right now right now let that fire as i move oh god let the angel of your presence move let there be deliverance it is over that's what the lord says to you over now in the name of jesus christ over 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 shabas katai jeketes kalabra katozi atakata over now in the name of jesus over by the anointing of the holy ghost it is over please believe as i'm passing you don't don't worry the anointing of god will locate you over now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now now over your life let it be over i'm seeing fire moving here like this who is that fire for in jesus name i stretch my hands let there be deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now mama be free now in the name of jesus christ supernatural deliverance um i'm seeing a circle here and the lord is saying restoration of ministerial anointing a circle lord where are they there are people here at least four of you i stretch my hands let the anointing locate you the call for ministry the call for ministry the call Parakato Sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is? Is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing a name like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please very quickly want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue fish. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Victoria. Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story. Completely. Amen. I don't know you, but yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we go in. Who is Victoria? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Everyone open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking forth spiritually in the name of jesus christ it's a new level for me it's a new level for me enter a new dimension enter a new dimension now in the name of jesus lift your hands i'm passing here now there is an anointing move move to the next level i'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing step into a new dimension i release that grace now I release that grace now i stretch my hands everything that has held you down let it leave you now in the name of jesus my god look at this are you seeing the legs are rotting completely in the name of jesus be free now i command be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ look at me my dear go home and write it good news comes for me in 12 days
Lord, lose their destinies. I'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing. Let the destiny be open now. Open now. Shabbat Sokos Kaliata. Embriketo Sasikete Likata. Jekros Kadabalako Tesiyanabahasiya. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here and I'm hearing, I have called you, accept my call, accept my call, accept my call, accept my call. My call is upon your life. My call is upon your life. Stop fighting. My call is upon your life. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. My call is upon your life. Accept my call. My call is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. That's what God is speaking. My mandate is upon your life. You cannot fight it. It's an ordinance decided from heaven. My mandate is upon your life. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Pastor Lawrence, speed, come. Where is, where is your wife to be? Come, come, two of you. I see a grace for speed. Lift your hands. Enter that dimension now. I release that grace. Speed to your life. The Lord is taking away delay. Go and mark it. You are entering a strange level. I see you climbing a ladder and the Lord is saying it's time for your glory. It's time for your glory. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Collect that child quickly from Kenny. Collect that child. Speed. That grace. Collect that child. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing that grace. A new dimension of speed coming upon your life. A new level of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed hallelujah mm. hey, Jimmy, i'm seeing something for you i'm seeing please stand up i'm seeing a bottle of oil and i'm seeing dollars a bottle of oil and dollars these two dimensions the spirit and supernatural resources that grace the lord is multiplying it i'm seeing a bottle a bottle of oil a bottle of oil the lord is giving you a voice not only in the area of finances but a strange demonstration of the spirit please be patient we are going to pray for the sick but tonight i i perceive god is doing something strange young man come come you and this guy two of you come stand step into a new dimension new dimension in the name of jesus you will never be the same this guy just lift your hands where you are come enter a new level in the spirit i release that grace now upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm looking at people and i'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat and the lord is saying is the spirit of prophecy lord i'm declaring right now it's happening to people right now it will come upon you like a mantle prophecy 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 from your belly from your belly prophecy i command those rivers makato sakata rivers of living water rivers 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 in the name of jesus christ this lady come you come quickly There is a grace the call of god is upon your life enter that dimension of his grace may the lord give you visitations 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 i bring you out of the cage that i see you in i bring you out of the cage i bring you out of the cage I see you inside a cage. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus. By fire. I bring you out. I bring you out. Ancestry will not fight you. 
I bring you out of the cage in the name of Jesus Christ. We are soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus. And he's stepping to a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. In the name of Jesus Christ. This usher lady. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. Shata sotosha. Mari katos kubaria kata. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. With precision. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. Where are these people that just married? This lady in welfare. Where is she now? You and your wife. Where are they? She's not around. Stand up. Let me pray for you on her behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for your mother. Let the Lord perfect her. But I'm praying for you. Something wants to take finances off your life. If I don't pray for you, I see great suffering in the days coming. It's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet. But I cancel it right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus. This fair lady. An angel is pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. An angel is pouring oil on your head. Breakthrough. Step into a new dimension. Step into a new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new level. A new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wato. Where is she? Is she here? I'm seeing a flag being raised up and the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season. Let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus. Let that flag be raised. You will never, never be down. Let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to pray for the sick. Let's just flow. God, you know, sometimes this is, this lady, you, come. Yes. Say for my shame. Say it for my shame. I receive double. The Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it. I lay my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, the grace for a new level. Is released upon you right now I command it so I declare it so in Jesus name I pray this gentleman you come confusion ends now in your life I lay my hands upon you I command confusion to end right now from your life in the name of Jesus confusion ends now over your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ confusion ends over your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing I will, I will prophesy generally but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car and an anointing I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now this is this is a, a blessing of a car you will stand and testify i don't care whether the resources are there or not i stretch my hands let that anointing make it happen 
in the name of Jesus Christ let that anointing by the spirit make it happen right now help that person please let that anointing make it happen right now in the name of Jesus make it happen cameraman come I want to pray for you look at me it will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in Amen. you believe what I'm saying lift your hands father let this brother drink of the grace for favor a fresh dimension a fresh dimension a fresh dimension of favor in the name of Jesus Christ this lady you come the Lord is saying I'm rolling away reproach from your life everything that looks like reproach I lay my hands upon you I'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through I command reproach go and never return from her life in the name of Jesus Christ now we're going to pray for the sick please we're going to be very fast we're going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three I will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, I'm in the main auditorium I want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for God's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh, God will grant grace pastor Lawrence come you will join them today when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you hallelujah father in the name of jesus by the corporate anointing we pray these people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ and what's wrong with you my dear Huh? fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay and your legs Lord Jesus please walk help this lady miracle, Jesus. in the name of Jesus walk my miracle here I release today. that anointing upon you right walk now my miracle, I correct your body Jesus. now hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah Please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. If they are still praying for you outside, just, just continue. Please, if your request is yet to come here, you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you. Don't, don't stretch your hands out of unbelief. If there are requests yet to come, please let them come here quickly. Please bring them quickly. Unto you that answers prayers, O God, shall all flesh come. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connected by faith.
Shakatuka parakatu barikata sipriada balaraba. Shakata parakata paroto subrias. Lord, arise in majesty. Arise in your power. Visit the case of people. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shata prakatu barakatu barikete kete. Shelekete pranda kata barakatush. Lord let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus Christ let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus let this be the last time shapakata pakata 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 ende keto rakato shada pragada baladaba lord we believe in you arise o god of heaven arise o god of heaven arise o god of heaven Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Shabakata parada baroto soto predegate. Legata kato prandegate presha de bele de bosh. Hallelujah. 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 Please respond with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people lord these requests represent different dimensions of demonic jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny father as i step upon this let this be symbolic of the ark going around jericho yeah. hallelujah listen you're going to shout jesus we're going to shout jesus seven times are we together as a prophetic act over this i'm going to guide you and you will shout it for every one shout let it represent one day going around jericho that at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act and oh god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now i'll call the number and you shout jesus are you ready number one number two Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba. I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Number five. Number six. I put an anointing on this seven shout let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain in the name of Jesus number seven Jesus. I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy and then we'll round up every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life shame and reproach some of you is a pattern across your family members in the name of Jesus Christ I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever 
hallelujah i release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life hallelujah i decree and declare that every garment he saw joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck attracting all kinds of things the bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness i tear off that garment from your life i tear off that garment from your life garment of reproach i tear it off from your life I tear it off from your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare divine direction Lord what do I do where do I go to tonight by dreams and visions and strange encounters I provoke divine direction to come to your direction in the name of Jesus Christ master we have toiled all night but i prophesy to you go back this time around to the same place you failed i anoint you go and succeed i anoint you go and succeed i anoint you go and surpass the ordinary in the name of jesus christ every door that has refused to open your parents tried it refused to open the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye not doors, ancient doors. I come against every ancient door and every gate. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Every helper that must arise tonight, not tomorrow tonight every helper ordained by god to rise up and come to your aid i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them listen whoever has what it takes to help you in the name of jesus i direct their eyes to you i say it again whoever has what it takes to help you i direct their hearts to you the same mystery that bound jonathan and david i declare wherever your helper is let it be as it were for jonathan and david in the name of jesus christ all those in ministry here i prophesy to you a strange unction upon the work on your hands step into a new direction step into a new dimension in the name of jesus christ every family here that has cried that's all you've known to do cry and cry and say when will god deliver us i declare that your weeping has endured enough i prophesy your morning comes and with it joy in the name of jesus christ those writing exams let the mercy of god the mercy that helped those who went before you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you hallelujah there are people here you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry it's not like you don't love god but revelations they don't come as they used to come again sometimes you open your bible you cannot even read to pray you are sensing something is wrong it's like you know your spiritual life is under attack in the name of jesus christ i launch you to the new a new insight a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter the lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings but to get the spirit of the message 
there are some of us the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down in the name of jesus tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life every wrong friend in your life whether you want them to go or not in the name of jesus for the sake of god's hand upon your life i separate you with them forever this night i separate you with them forever time wasters destiny wasters i cause a separation between you and them forever we're rounding up some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness the bible says a lazy hand a slothful hand will that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg he will become poor i decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence not just diligence the spirit of productive diligence i release it upon you right now are you ready to receive favor i will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ even if you have seen favor in your life by the grace of god i release you to a new order of favor a new order of favor a new order of favor favor is not when you have money favor is when men arise by god to meet your needs if you have money and men don't come to your life you are not favored you are only prosperous you are not favored favor is when men arise that before you call they come they don't come and go they come and stay until the purposes of god have been achieved i call them now from the east the west the north and the south help us of your destiny may they appear before you in the name of jesus christ I don't know what personal request you desire from God but I release my faith with you and I declare that by miracle service may you will only return rejoicing over that issue in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a good job not just a job that you look like a slave a job with honor in the name of Jesus I agree with you between now and next miracle service may god bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension everyone in business here the god factor the favor factor the help factor the ebenezer factor i release it upon your business i release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of jesus christ the Bible says where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you it says I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare may your gates be continually open now I want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us I want to pray that somebody will give you money listen hold on listen we are not money mongers this is not some canal thing there are some of you this is what you need you don't need advice you don't need counseling you just need help straight help i pray for you you will be surprised it will look like a dream i pray for you not a helper not access thank god for it but a helper that will come with the financial resource to help you i stretch my hands and i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ the anointing for miracles help that guy the anointing for signs the anointing for wonders whether you are called in ministry or not in the name of jesus may you carry it in your spirit 
from today begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders and finally i pray for you whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the lord between now and the next 30 days whatever needs to be shaken whatever needs to be overturned in the name of jesus christ joy for your family members joy to your family members in the name of jesus christ let it be so in the name of jesus christ and for every for every worker here in the name of jesus christ after tonight rise with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you in the name of jesus whoever fights you may he find himself fighting himself whoever fights your family may they fight themselves they will point the knife at you and hurt themselves in the name of jesus christ hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you